So he starts talking about how he is paired up with this guy named Sergeant Major Bully, and he's not flying helicopters yet. Oh no. He's gonna fly a little prop plane, a little yellow prop plane called a Firefly. Now, Bully has won for himself many crowns in heaven. <laughs> because when Harry goes on to explain the relationship that they had in this plane together, as Harry was trying to learn how to fly, I cannot imagine the patience and the long suffering that this man withstood trying to teach Harry how to fly. No, I, I can't do this anymore. I can't, it's too long. Okay, so they're up in the sky, they're flying, right? Okay, then Harry goes on to describe this. And the only thing I could think was, have you been a human in the world for longer than five minutes? Like why this, he's gonna go on to explain this shocking scenario. And I'm reading and thinking, I'm shocked that you're shocked. This harkens back to the will when he was shocked that they were going to make him write his will. It's like, Harry, are, are, are you this sheltered from reality? Can you not imagine? This is stupid. Yo, you don't even know what stupid is. It's about to get all stupid up in here. He seems to have no powers of imagination. Okay, so... They go up on the plane and he says that on one of our first flights together, with no warning, Bully threw the aircraft into a stall. I felt the left wing dip, a sickening feeling of disorder, of entropy. And then after several seconds that felt like decades, he recovered the aircraft and leveled the wings. I stared at him. What in the absolute? Was this an aborted suicide attempt? No, he said gently. This was the next stage in my training. And he says countless things can go wrong in the air, he explained. And he needed to show me what to do, but also how to do it. <laughs> Obviously, Harry. Then we, we, we went into a stall. And I was like, is he trying to attempt suicide? Oh my God, he's trying to kill himself and me. Has he never imagined that going up in the plane, the instructor would say, now we're going to run some problems in which things don't go wonderfully well. Anyway, then he goes, he goes on about how every time they'd go up in the plane, Bully would do it again, over and over and over. They would fall through the air and then Bully would tell him, it's time. And Harry would look at him, time for what? what? What are you talking about? We're falling through the air. What time is it? Time to fix the aircraft and pull it up. That time. And the guy like over and over and over, Harry describes a scenario in which the plane would be falling and he would be sitting there in a panic and the guy would have to remind him, let's use the instruments. Let's fly the aircraft. Let's pull ourselves up out of this fall. Go to the right. It can't mean that. There's Look, a lake right there. I think it knows where it is going. This is the, the lake. machine knows. This is the lake. Stop yelling at me. No, it's Stop not yelling. yelling. There's no room here. And he's like, Bully was always interested in telling me it's time, it's time. That was like his catchphrase. And like a poor guy is like, it's time, you know? He had like a catchphrase, always telling me it was time. <laughs> that guy in time. Anyway, so one of the things that really disappointed him was that whenever he managed to do something right, there was no fanfare. Bully didn't make a thing of it. Bully wasn't clapping him on the back. Bully wasn't being like, good on you, mate. It was all, glad you did your job. For once. Glad you weren't panicking. For once. And so... Uh, you know, the entire section is like this liturgy between the pilot and, and Harry. What, what's the matter? It's time, Lieutenant Wales. Time for your solo. Oh, okay. Literally, he writes this. And it's like over and over and over. It's like the liturgy of the insane. We're falling out of the sky. You're the one in the control seat. Fly the plane. Time, time for what? 
Okay, so he finally uh, gets a chance to fly the plane by himself. It goes well. He, again, wants fanfare parades. Where's his ticker tape parade, he'd like to know. There isn't any. He just did his job. And he's sort of surly about the fact that it just went on without notice. This guy has got to be praised, clapped on the back, hugged, kissed. Like, like there has to be, he constantly needs people to mark his success for him. He contains no ability to be proud of himself. All right, so then he goes on to talk about how it was time now to learn how to actually fly helicopters and was under Majors um, Lazelle and Mitchell. And they taught him how to land a helicopter, which was the most difficult part of flying a helicopter because when you're hovering, um, there is something that Harry describes as hover monkeys. So it's this phenomenon where just above the ground, a helicopter falls prey to fiendish confl confluence of factors, airflow, downdraft, gravity. First it wobbles, and then it rocks, and then it pitches and it yaws, and as if invisible monkeys are hanging from both its skids, yanking. And to land a helicopter, you have to shake off these hover monkeys, and the only way to do that is by ignoring them. So it was like the big test, the bit like everybody in the class was struggling, everybody was failing, but of course, when it's time for him to land the plane during his final test, he does it. Though one of his classmates had a crash landing and brought in the ambulances and whatnot. So, you know, he's the hero. <laughs> seems to notice.